Hey everyone, it's Patriot Nurse here today, and in this segment, I wanted to talk about the top five antibiotics that I would choose for poop hits the fan prepping, and prepping in general, but for poop hits the fan. And let me start off with a little bit of a disclaimer. You mentioned antibiotics today, and you're likely to get a myriad of emotive responses of people saying, well, I tried this, and my daughter had a reaction to it. Everybody's got their own thing about antibiotics, and a lot of people don't like to use them. They like herbs first and herbs only. I think herbs first is just fine, and that's what I do, but I think it's a big mistake to say that I'm not going to store any antibiotics if I have the ability to, and that herbs are going to cure everything, because the bottom line is, from my experience and from what studies have shown, they don't. Um, I'm not saying that they don't help a lot of things and that they can't prevent a lot of things, but if you're having an anaphylactic reaction or you're having a heart attack, herbs are not going to do it. You need something a little bit faster. So that's just a little check on the herbs only type of thing. I am of the perspective, before everybody gets real mad here, I'm of the perspective that I, am, I would use antibiotics as a last resort. Right? I, I am not one of these people who you get a snivel, come on in, we'll give you some antibiotics. No, that's, that's, not, that's not how this works. Uh, another thing here too to consider, um, just from my perspective on antibiotics, is let's, let's give your body a chance to fight it off by itself, right? And let's use some herbs, right? Let's use rose hips for vitamin C. Let's, let's get some sunlight for some vitamin D. You know, I mean, I, I'm not knocking herbs here by any means, but I think that it's a mistake not to store any antibiotics if you can, okay? If you don't have the ability or funds to, that's one thing. But if you, if you do have the ability and access to them and you don't store them, I think that's probably not a good thing. So now let's move on into uh, kind of a little bit deeper understanding of antibiotics. The antibiotics that I'm telling you here right now, my top five, they're probably not going to be the same for everybody around the country and around the world because there are, there are different disease patterns. Uh, there are different strains of bacteria that will respond to some drugs in some parts of the country and will not respond to them at all in other parts of the country. So what I am saying today is from my own little patriot nurse, this is from my own experience, from what works here in Tennessee, where I'm at, okay? May be different for you, that's okay. If you're a pharmacist or your doctor and you disagree with me, that's okay too. Medicine isn't one size fits all, right? Everybody's got different perspectives and I respect them equally. So, I dropped my paper. Let me get my paper. Let's talk about the top five antibiotics, a little patriot nurse here, what I would store, okay? And we'll go right down the list here. The first one, Zithromax, or azithromycin. Two, ampicillin, not commonly used or talked about necessarily anymore. Three, Cipro. Four, amoxicillin. And five, doxycycline. Now let's, we've enumerated them, so now let's expand upon each one. The Zithromax, and by the way, generics in the United States are just fine. They are on an AB drug rated system, which means that they're pretty much comparable, pretty much the same as the brand names. So generics are just fine here for these. Okay. In other parts of the world, uh, like Southeast Asia, not so much. So with Zithromax, Zithromax treats a bunch of different things. Zithromax is commonly used for urinary tract infections, intra-abdominal infections, septicemia. People going septic, you hear about this, getting blood infections, that's septic. Um, Zithromax can treat that. Typically it's IV though. It's not pill if, if it's septic. Um, upper respiratory infections, Zithromax also will treat and it will also treat gonorrhea. If you think that STDs are just magically going to stop when the poop hits the fan, I think you're going to have another thing coming because they're probably going to spread. And I, while we're on this subject, I think it's also important to note that because when the poop hits the fan, Hygiene is going to be lacking because you're not going to have the same access to running water. You're not going to have the same access to plumbing. So the standard of living that we have enjoyed is probably not going to be perpetuated, right? So because of that, because of the lack of hygiene and the lack of running water, et cetera, you're going to have probably more urinary tract infections, especially for women. You're going to have more yeast infections for women. Probably going to have more uh, digestive infections. Uh, abdominal infections, that type of thing, from E. coli, go right down the list. Probably going to have more of these. So this is another reason to start thinking about, okay, what would I do? What would I store? 
So we touched on Zithromax here. Um, and let's go to the next one, ampicillin. Ampicillin is, it's, 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 it's the mac daddy of, of cillins, if you will, uh, from my perspective. It has some toxicity issues. And by the way, with any of these uh, antibiotics that I'm talking about here, don't take them if you have sensitivity, like allergic reactions to these types of things. You should know this by now. I'm not trying to be hard on anybody, but this is kind of the legalese doctor that has crippled healthcare in our country. So just throwing that out there. Not responsible for anything. Research this. Get you one of these. This is a nurse's drug guide. You need to have one of these. If you're storing pharmaceuticals, you need to have one of these. Get them at a used uh, college textbook store. That'll, that'll do just fine, but you need one of these. Okay. Uh, so ampicillins. Ampicillins are a more broad spectrum type of uh, antibiotic. They treat skin infections, which we talked about in our other videos. Skin integrity maintenance is going to be a big thing because you're going to be probably outside more. You're probably going to be encountering more scratches and scrapes and cuts, uh, more puncture wounds too. So these are things to think about, skin infections here. Hopefully you've cleaned them well and done really good first aid and good cleaning after the fact. So hopefully your risk for infection is lower, but if it is, you're probably gonna need a little bit of help there. Skin infections are nasty. So ampicillins are good for that. Ampicillin is also a, an antibiotic that's commonly used with women who are group B strep positive and they're pregnant. They ran that antibiotic just to kind of help mom and help baby with that. Ampicillin is also good for gonorrhea and it's also good for ear infections. So that's, that's the ampicillin jazz tango there. The next one here is Cipro, and Cipro got a lot of publicity way back in the day after the anthrax thing, and it got way overused, way overused, and because of that, because people were really stupid, they were scared, okay, and I, I can understand, if I didn't have that information base and I got scared and I thought Cipro was a cure-all, I would have probably taken it too, okay, but Cipro, it's a doozy, okay, so you got to be careful with it. It's got a lot of toxicity issues and side effects, but... Um, Cipro, it, it has its place. You need to use it sparingly. Don't run straight to the Cipro, okay? Because w when we, we keep doing that, you make it not work on other things, right? Because drugs build up, or excuse me, bugs build up a resistance to drugs. Cipro, of course, post-anthrax exposure, most people on the street can tell you that. But Cipro is also good for UTIs especially hospital-acquired UTIs and hospital-acquired pneumonia. Those are killers. Cipro is used for those. Cipro is also used for infectious diarrhea, right? Traveler's diarrhea, just general infectious diarrhea, it's, it's, it's used to help treat that. It's also used for the treatment of bone and joint infections, okay? So as I'm going down the list and I'm telling you about these things, be thinking in your head of family members who you anticipate could need these types of things, okay? If you've got a family member with really crappy whatever and i and i named something off here to you might might behoove you to store that in particular okay so those are things that cipro is used for amoxicillin anybody who's ever had a child with a sinus infection or an ear infection has probably taken home that little bottle of the pink stuff the liquid called amoxicillin amoxicillin is in the penicillin family and uh it's still in the south here at least it's still showing pretty good treatment capability with a lot of our upper respiratory infections a lot of ear infections ear nose and throat think amoxicillin that seems to be the the pre prevailing thought down here um, the other thing here to consider is that it's in the penicillin family right amoxicillin is you can use it for teeth right for abscesses and dental care that's really going to be lacking when this stuff goes down so just think about that teeth upper respiratory infections, and uh, ear, nose, and throat type of stuff with amoxicillin. And the last one here that I've got of the five antibiotics that I would store is doxycycline. Doxycycline is good especially for malaria, if you live in an area that's prone to malaria, um, but it's also very effective against rickettsia rickettsii, which is Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is a killer, uh, and it's very commonly misdiagnosed as a bunch of different things. Before the advent of the tetracycline family, which doxycycline is a progenitor, or I guess is a, it comes on the heels of. Before the advent of the cycline antibiotics, there was, per Wikipedia, as many as 30% of people that were dying from Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. So Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is a vector disease. It's transmitted through ticks, fleas, uh, lice bites. So these things are probably going to be 
coming up more often when, when the poop hits the fan and, and hygiene capability goes down. 